Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the always online multiplayer gaming podcast, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things multiplayer related, and this is it, this is it, friendos, the end of 2021, this will be our last always online podcast, we'll still be having oddball streams throughout the next two weeks, because, uh, you know, know, that's fine. Uh, keep an eye on Twitter and you'll know when Troy or Jason or myself are, are going live and what we're playing and you can come and hang out. But Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are the next two Fridays, so we're giving the staff off of the show itself for those days. So yeah, happy New Year, happy holidays. Hope everybody has a safe one. We've got Twitch uh, chat live with us. If you want to join us live every Friday with the exception of the next two, uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb. I'm your host, Mike Byrne. Joining me to go over all the multiplayer gaming news that is fit to talk about, Mr. Jason Winter. What's up, sir? Are you ready for the holidays? Uh, yeah, I, I'm totally ready. I'm you got stockings in- back there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got stockings. I got the thing of batteries there to hold them up so they don't fall down, whatever. Nobody can hear this because I'm on Twitch and it's screwing up, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Whatever. The recording happy will holidays. be holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Also on the line, Mr. Troy Blackburn, the noob fridge himself, joining us for the last show of the year. What's up? Uh, there are no holiday decorations behind me because I moved everything out of the office. If you watched my stream on Wednesday, I did not have my camera on. It was very much on purpose. I cleared everything out, so it looks very kind of bare back there, but um, I'm working on something for Mike, and it's... What? Uh, going to be what, super- what is on your door what what is that like thing with the light it looks like darth vader's chest plate on your door behind you what is that that sir is an automatic doggy door no uh-huh they have little things on their collars and they just walk up to the door and it lets them out and it lets them back in for the dog i thought it was for you like you forgot how to use the knob or something <laughs> My fat ass ain't fitting through that what are you <laughs> i barely fit through the regular door <laughs> I was like, what? What is that? It's got like, I mean, if it was painted black, I would have, I would have thought it was Darth Vader's chest piece. Yeah, Twitch acting up a little bit with the connection here, but recording will be fine. So we're gonna keep rolling, keep rolling, and slide over and get started with the news. Well, we got, uh, we got a lot of little news this week, but then we've got. A bigger topic that we will get into later. I am sure everybody has heard by now. Gamigo finally revealed their MMORPG of mystery. And it did turn out to be Fractured Online. One of the many, many reasons we have Troy on today. Uh, We'll get to that in a little bit. But before we get to that, let's talk about some other news I cannot wait to play this, Jason. I like, and I know, you know, I'm going to be disappointed by something, right? Or, but V Rising just continues to get me very excited with uh, the the videos they put out. This week, we've got a PVE slash PVP content video showing you the basic HUD, the UI, giving you some uh, glimpses at combat in a PVE scenario, and then taking over some (laughs) unfortunate vampires out in the wild Mm -hmm. in a PVP scenario. And even uh, I could tell that you kind of like what you saw there in the write-up that you did, that even you, Mm -hmm. cynic that you are, were kind of like, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm not usually one for the the isometric ARPG kind of look, although I'm surprised you still like it because you can rotate the camera. I know you hated that in Magic Legends. Well, if you look, though, there's a difference, though. Uh, okay. In in the way this one is done, the center of the image is the character's head, okay. not the character's feet, <laughs> which okay. when you make it the feet, the, the, whatever's walking in front of you, you see less at the top of your screen than you see behind you, which was dumb, which was dumb. Um, yeah. And, and the problem with, uh, with their... You know, comparing it to Magic Legends, which, by the way, the top articles of 2021, the top news stories article is up on MMO Bomb right at the banner, and Magic Legends, or um, yeah, Magic Legends is yeah, one Magic of Legends that, is in there. Yep. Is I almost forgot the name. 
but yeah, so you're right. I yeah, but they fixed the gripes in a di- uh, in sure. a better way here. I, I gotta admit, though, I'm a little worried about this game. Uh, Why? Because you're really hyped for it. Yeah, probably. That means we've seen how Aliens Fire Team worked. Your your D and D Edge Lord game that you were just so happy oh, about. God, that that wow. one hurt. That one hurt. <laughs> Aliens, aliens. I kind of knew that Alien Fire Team was going to be a. I'll play it for a little while. I really thought the D and D one could be a. Yeah, and as long as you keep making content, I'm going to keep coming back. Uh, very Diablo. So you you better be into isometric ARPGs, Troy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if you are. Is have you been watching this? Is this something you're interested in? This is currently number three on my Steam wish list. Oh. Ooh. So what beats it? What's number two and one? I want to get. I want to guess. You want to guess? guess, guess you want to guess? Elden Ring is one of them. Am I correct? Mm, no. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Troy would be wish listing Elden Ring. No. Do you want me to die of a stroke while playing a video game, Jason? <laughs> 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 Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, number two there, is right? the the Ruined King uh, RPG oh, okay. from League of Legends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't picked that up yet. Um, I actually had a refund off of something from the Steam sale, so I just haven't bought the Ruin King yet. And the other one's an upcoming game called The First Men. Uh, it's kind of like RimWorld. Uh, looks very similar with an even more interesting art style. Um, the people have legs, so it looked cool. They have, I have legs. legs. <laughs> I, 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 I love those like, yeah. Steam yeah. games. Yeah. Where's Steam Lost Ark on the games. list for you, then? Uh, down towards the bottom, just because it's there, just to remind me, so I get a notification when it goes live. So that's not one you're really watching. Then what? What sets the V Rising apart for you? Then is it just the vampire mythos? The, it's, the a little bit of cool the, stuff they're doing with you know you got to be in the shade or you're going to mm-hmm. take damage from the sun. You know, like what is it about? Because they're both ARPGs in like an open-ish world as far as being able to party with others. What is the difference between the two for you? Why is one third and one at the bottom? Uh, because Lost Ark is, as an MMO, it's going to be something that I just play for a little while, and then it's not going to be my forever game. Uh, I'm going to play it because uh, it's going to be interesting for a little while. Then when you get to the end game ground, it's going to be boring. Uh, v Rising is up top because it looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah, the does. vampire aesthetic is is very unique in this type of game the the whole sun mechanic is super cool uh trying to get back to your lair and stuff and it just uh mostly it looks from what we've seen so far it looks gorgeous and it looks super smooth everything just all the animations all the combat just i mean just flows together super nice so it just looks like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun and it's not trying to be my forever game it's trying to be a game that you know hey get some enjoyment out of this and then you can move on with your life yeah, and Jason, it doesn't hurt, uh, I would assume, that it's Stunlock Studios, right, of Battle Right fame. And maybe you don't like that particular game or not, but if you do like that style of game, there is something to be said for Battle Right having pretty engaging combat, people liking that system, maybe wanting to see that system in other things. So it, it is not a let's bring it over from Korea, have Amazon and untested publisher publish it. So maybe there is some validity in just the names behind it too. I mean, yeah, but on the other hand, you know, battle, right. While a nice little hit for some people was never a huge game and you know, some no, 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 are not no. a huge studio either. So yeah, I don't even look at this as a continuation of battle, right. Or the next iteration or whatever. I just look at it as its own thing and think it looks cool on its own. Yeah, and I think it. You know, obviously I'm treating it by itself sure. too. It's a totally different game, but there is that, that pedigree where you have done this before you didn't screw over people with monetization you know some of those concerns that you might have with lost ark coming you know you don't have here but check out the trailer it's fantastic you actually get to see some gameplay and you see some some poor vampires get uh pvp ganked which Mm. yeah i'm sure that'll be me Uh, we're together, gonna, we're gonna me, talk about you. NFTs later. We we left last week's show talking about NFTs in gaming, and that was the question of the week. And boy, did you uh, not disappoint on your replies there. Some of you even remembered to put a weekly bomb in there while you were doing it. Now we'll get to those later. But on that same blockchain NFT cryptocurrency topic, we found out this week that Nexon has now decided. You know what? 
If you want to buy stuff in our games, we're going to go ahead and uh, let you use cryptocurrency. By the way, this has nothing to do with the fact that we're holding Bitcoin uh, to a tremendous no, degree. No. This has absolutely <laughs> nothing to nothing. do with that. <laughs> we just want to give the customer more options to go ahead and pay. Uh, you're going to be able to use Ethereum, Dogecoin, Bitcoin. There are some others planned as well. I was kind of surprised to see Dogecoin there, Troy. So <laughs> now, now you can get your Nexon cash shop purchases in on the Dogecoin. On this same topic, Jason and I, and this really isn't multiplayer, but I'll throw it in here. Mm -hmm. Jason and I were talking earlier about Stalker 2. Uh, they were going to implement NFTs in their game got some massive backlash from their fans and as of late last night or about 16 17 hours ago posted saying all right hey you know what we hear you we're not gonna do it so again we run into that sticky topic of in theory could be useful but there's a lot of bad that comes with it even if some of that bad is just perception are you going to be using Dogecoin anytime soon, Troy, to go ahead and buy your Nexon loot boxes? No, I think I need to go ahead and just make up my own pretend currency and yeah. use it to get things for free from other people. That's all it takes. I mean, everybody else is doing it. So much speculation in the noob markets, coin. too. Yeah. Noob coin. Noob the coin. noob coin. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Now, yeah. now usable in all. Uh, you can buy subs to M Mobile with Nubecoin. There you go. I'm right. <laughs> I'm gonna get in on that while it's point zero 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 one cent. Look, uh, if you get in on it coin. now, we can literally double the value. <laughs> <laughs> to zero 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 two cents. Wow. There are two of us in on this. Well, that's nice. right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean. Fine, Jason, open up your payment methods to take whatever payment methods you want. But I don't know. I'm not a huge investor into crypto. I have a little bit in, in a couple different things. I, I just, I don't, I don't even use it for, I, I use it as an investment piece right now. I don't really imagine me spending it through yeah, Nexon when it is infinitely easier because if you don't do crypto at all, by the way, it's kind of challenging to get started if you don't know anything about it. With like getting wallets and figuring out how the wallets work and everything like that, it could be a little daunting for somebody that's new. I think it's just much easier to give next on my credit card. Yeah, but that doesn't raise the price of their crypto investments. <laughs> right. If you do that, doesn't that seem a bit weird? This way, they get the money and they get the investment. It's like yeah. it's like if they owned the United States. And they could, hey, we'll, we'll take your money for this. Oh, by the way, you using that money makes our dollar makes the dollar worth more. Hey, that's good for us too. Yeah, okay. that's. It just seems very weird that you're able to do that. <laughs> like, yeah. Double dip like that. Oh, cool. We have a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, but because you're actually spending it with us, we now have one point one million dollars worth of Bitcoin, and the value went up. So we actually have one point two million dollars <laughs> worth of Bitcoin. It's yeah. it is pretty weird. It is pretty weird, but. Sure. You want to pay with the Doge? You can pay with the Doge. There you go. On the same line of Good thought. Point. And Much loot box. <laughs> Much loot box. <laughs> <laughs> On the same line of thoughts, Peter Molyneux, uh, you may have not heard that name in a while of Fable fame. And what was Gods of... What, what was that one? It was Some just other like, crap that nobody cares about. Yeah, it was an absolute cluster of a, of a project. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that dude was supposed to get in the game and then the game never came out. Uh, won that contest. 22 Cans and Peter Molyneux, uh, they, they now have a blockchain NFT game called Legacy and they are selling land in the game. Uh, it's pretty much sold out. Uh, depending on when you watch this, there might be a little bit left. That That has done like oh, apparently quick. like... Fifty-three million dollars worth of land sales at last at last glance, Troy. That is just nuts. It is such a speculative market when you put these NFTs and and land and stuff like that in games right now. That when you watch it reselling, it's not reselling uh, as much as people would think. I mean, they're hopeful for the future, I guess, but. The last thing I would be investing in is virtual land if I was like very concerned about my portfolio right now. Add on so top you, of that the fact that Peter Molyneux just has a huge reputation 
for massive overpromise and in sometimes not just under delivering but not delivering at all uh and i don't know i would personally even if i was interested in nfts and gaming this is one i'd probably stay away from but maybe i'm missing out the chance to be you know that gold mine winner you know, and, and he's not the only one selling virtual land for real money and making bank. This is designed to make one person and one person only money, and that's Peter Molyneux. And it's the same as freaking Earth 2. The only people who's ever going to make any money off of that are the people who are running that scam of an MMO game, whatever you want to call it. This is this is utterly ridiculous. What happens when, uh, you know, they, they want more money? They're just like, oh, more land up for sale. This is so dumb. Spending real money for virtual land. You think you're going to get rich. You're not. This is all going to disappear in a couple of years and nobody's going to think anybody think about it. Nobody else wants this crap. <laughs> well, that's it's like it. buying starships that don't exist in star citizen. I'm about to it's, say, I'm about to your say money, do what you want, but you're an idiot. And yeah. it's something Jason and I, thank you. Uh, Lord, uh, in chat goddess was the, was the game goddess, uh, G O D U S. Uh, and that's something Jason and I said, like there are, perceived benefits to having nft type or blockchain functionality in games but at the end of the day it still has to be a good game that people want to play that people want to stay in and play for those things to have any value at all at the end of the day so even if you're like hey peter molyneux 22 cans these are all you know people that have been around the block they know what they're doing they still, that does, none of this absolves them, Jason, of still having to make a good game, something that Peter Molyneux probably, you know, in many eyes, including my own, arguably hasn't done since Fable 2. I was about to say, if you think Peter Molyneux still knows what he's doing, then get, get out of your time travel machine and come back from 2004 or whatever. It's like when I wrote that article, like at the start of the year, it was like, you know, quit your favorite game if you've been in it for a while, no matter how good it used to be. I said the same thing applies to creators. If you liked Fable or whatever, or, or Populous, that was the original thing he did, right? Oh, no. Yeah, way isn't back isn't when. Populous Will Wright? Will Wright? No, maybe you're I right. Don't I don't know. Anyway, if you liked what Peter Molyneux did 17 years ago, that should have no bearing on what he does now. So Now i got to look that up. Don't hey, even Molyneux know. and freaking Richard Garriott, I swear, people will not. Oh, it was Molyneux. You're right. Oh, you're let right. them guys go. Like, <laughs> and Raph, Raph yeah. Coster, because all the Star Wars Galaxies fans. You were right on the populist thing. You okay, right. I thought so. Right. I get it. There's an intriguing. Hey, people got super rich during the Bitcoin, you know, growth and stuff like that. That is a small percentage of players in this market. People started selling some NFTs for exorbitant amounts of money. Troy, again, though, that is a small percentage of people that are making a lot of money. It is. I think kind of like our generation's, hey, you could get rich quick idea. But the get rich quick applies to a very, very small percentage. And when you tie it to video games, it still doesn't absolve you of having to build a decent product, which is, you know, arguably where some of these are failing right now. And, and what is the game idea? It's basically a second job. It's like start a business, mm -hmm. start a virtual business, sell virtual goods in your virtual. That's the gameplay loop. I can go the, to a real job and make real money. Yeah. I mean, that's the other <laughs> point. I can of it, actually buy things with. It's like people are people who are gamers, of course, think, oh, I'm a good gamer. I go and I play my game and I get max level stuff and I do the raids and whatever and I'm good. I could probably do this too. And you probably can't. You're not that guy who's going to be there, like you said, working this job 12, 16 hours a day or whatever mm -hmm. to, to mine up your coin or land and, or whatever. And meanwhile, the hell you're right now, you're not actually making any money. So you yeah. got to have a real job too. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> And and don't get me wrong, I love the potential upside, but I'm I not going to rehash nah. the potential upside that I talked about last week and what comes with that upside. Uh, I don't know if the pros outweigh the cons at that point. I, I don't know. We'll have to watch how it plays out. Uh, how it's playing out for Blizzard, though, actually not too shabby this week. I mean, Jason's going to write a piece today talking already about... Already did it. Their, it's oh, it's already out? Yep. It's already out? Okay. Uh, about their, you know, not having great representation across the board and trust us, we'll fix it. <laughs> this, that's a great quote. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's sub headlines sometimes really get me. So the headline is Activision Blizzard promises greater transparency details representation data. 
The sub headline says, quote, trust us and we will fix it, end quote, says company nobody trusts. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Jason just sneaks them in and gets me on that. Anyway, not what we wanted to talk about. They are also obviously in our top news articles of 2021. So you'll want to go take a look at that plug plug for the second time. MMObomb.com is what pays the bills. Get your ass over there. Comment, like rate your games. But outside of that news, remember the DFEH was fighting with the EEOC or the EEOC over that $18 million settlement, and they said, hey, we don't want them to, to, to do that. That's not, that's not cool. And then, by the way, Blizzard was like, whoa, some former DFEH people or some former EEOC people now work for the DFEH. You can't build a case and then transfer to a body and oppose that case. Well, a judge actually agreed uh, with the final result there. Judge Fisher basically told the uh, two agencies fighting that this was highly inappropriate. Uh, basically giving Activision Blizzard a little bit of a win, called it a bit unseemly, and then added on Troy, quote, I feel like I should send the two of you to a mediator, never mind Activision getting involved in this. I mean, if you're Activision, any good news, even this small, is good news, but pretty harsh words from the judge. It, it gives Activision an opportunity to say, hey, Somebody else is the bad guy besides us. Like, look over here. Look over here. Look over here. Bad guys. Over here. Not us. Trust us. We'll fix it. Trust us. We'll fix it. Honestly, I, I mean, Chad already, Terra Nova, saying how much was the judge paid. Jason, you and I talked about this on a, on the show when it broke, and we both kind of were like, I don't want to be the judge in this case because I, I think you have to rule against the DFEH. Granted, we are not insiders to immense amounts of legal knowledge but just from the outside looking in you cannot build a case and then oppose that case as uh, opposing counsel that is a conflict of interest i didn't see any way a judge could rule differently than to say the dfeh can't oppose this yeah it's unfortunate though because as we mentioned before that 18 million dollars if that's what it turns out to be it's is a pittance yeah it's barely a drop in the bucket bad bad uh, activision it's a pfft. They, they don't even get bad Activision. We when yeah. we when we broke it down, we we were like, "This is how much Call of Duty Warzone makes in a week." That uh, was five billion a day. Here's the here's the number, and yeah. it was you know four times greater than the eighteen million dollar lawsuit. Like they they make this in in a day. Mm. Um, no big deal to them. So I mean, a minor win for Activision Blizzard, but yeah, uh, they're not going to get many of those as as this continues to to shake out. And I don't think it's going away anytime soon, gents and ladies. We're going to have a long 2022, particularly because we also know Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 ain't coming this year. Mm -hmm. Ain't coming this year. So We got nothing else to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, what are they going to talk about in BlizzCon? In, or I know they're not doing BlizzCon, but they said, hey, we're still going to make announcements in that like February time period. What the hell are they going to announce? You have phones, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Busting out Diablo Immortal and taking it for a walk. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, they can show gameplay of stuff, but how excited are you, Jason, to see Overwatch 2 in February or March knowing that you're not going to see it until 2023? Yeah, not really at all. Yeah, exactly. Exa and that's whether you would actually buy it, given their situation or not, setting yeah. that aside. Since I don't, I don't care about anything. I don't care what they said at any point. I've been done with them. Actually, since a little bit before this, when they first started announcing record profits year after year and still firing employees by the hundreds, uh, that's the point where I just quit supporting. You were done. I was what? Done. What? So, is it just Blizz product, or are you like you don't do any Activision product? No, period? I try to actively avoid all Activision Blizzard. So any you're not doing Call of Duty, you're not you're not no. doing anything, whether it's no. Blizz itself or not. Jason, are you like having a personal boycott on on, on them right now too? I, and I yeah. know that one. This one actually, you know, means a little more to you than Daybreak did because you weren't heavily invested in Daybreak titles. You do have a vested interest in the Overwatch mm -hmm. franchise. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I uninstalled Hearthstone a few weeks ago. So I finally figured I was just not going to get back to that. And yeah, if Overwatch two like came out tomorrow, I wouldn't buy it, despite my overall interest in the game in general but yeah 
Yeah, I let the WoW sub lapse. Had to leave my my guild, my raiding guild, and you know I still hang out with them, but you know I let all that lapse. I, I let it lapse like right after the news broke, but then somebody anonymously gifted me three months of sub, and I was like, well, mm. shit. So <laughs> I think they needed a tank, right? That's <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> Uh, and then when that expired, I was like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, last little bit of micro news, an update for you on something we talked about last week in finding out that it was actually Ark Survival Evolved that was going after Myth of Empires alleging copyright infringement, had uh, Steam DMCA uh, takedown of the title. Well, you know what? maybe, and we, we kind of talked, well, you know, if there's things in the background with the same name and there's enough of them, maybe they have a case here. It doesn't seem like Myth of Empires thinks they have a case because now they're on the aggressive, Jason. Yeah, they are suing Snail Games, calling their allegations false, saying that evidence presented by Snail, quote, misleadingly presents out of order an extremely small set of names that exist in Myth of Empires source code. If you look over the suit, you can see where uh, Snail, you know, tried to delineate all these different names that sounded very similar. Yeah, credit, by the way, to uh, Connor and MMO Fallout for right. uncovering the suit itself. Jason was following this story, but Connor's the one who found the actual suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a list of like 150 uh, file names that seem pretty similar. Looking over just a handful of them, I didn't look through every single one of them. A lot of them are, they are kind of close. It's like, let me see if I can find one here. Here's one in an uh, arc called No Claim Flag Decay Destructive Period, which is No Team Area Decay Interval. That's what they called for uh, one of them, which I uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, There's like Consume Primal Item and Consume Item, which are maybe generic enough that you would think it's not that thing. So, But a few of them are a little more, a little more close, so it's... it's I don't know. It's not, it's not an open and shut case, I think. I like Flintstone in the comments on this piece saying, on the suit, they should not have gone this route. They should have done something face-to-face -face or phone chat to see why and how they can help with what's known and, and overthinking because the winners in any suit, and Jason has said this before, Troy, the winners in any suit are always the, the lawyers. lawyers. <laughs> uh... Troy has nothing to say. He's like, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Lawyers win. Congratulations. I don't know. I wish I knew more about coding so I could like give some sort of informed opinion on this, but I don't know anything about coding to tell you whether those are similar enough to, you know, be a copy paste or not. So. I don't know. It's it's gonna be a dicey. You gotta prove it. You know, if if we're going to and maybe that is why Myth of Empires went exactly with litigation, because they were like, you gotta prove it. You got to prove it. We didn't, and and let's say they know they didn't, right? Okay. And I can see yeah. them saying, I know we didn't, and you know what? I'm going to make you prove it, and you're hurting us right now, so I'm going to take you to court so that the damages start right now. Yeah, because everybody keep in mind, the fact that the game got taken down does not mean that they were guilty of this. Um, if a DMCA is, is filed in the proper way, uh, Steam had no choice but to pull the game. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, it wasn't like Steam weighed and looked and decided that this game is stolen. They didn't have a choice. They were like, yeah, they, okay, this they is don't, And we talked about we that last week. They don't arbitrate this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they are legally obliged to oh, say, that, that just the two of you need to go talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go talk. Is. On top of that, they did release uh, Ark Survival Evolved of uh, like 150 monsters or something. 150 square kilometers. Oh, square so kilometers. Sorry, Only sorry. three new monsters. <laughs> three new monsters. That was, oh, that was a hell of an update. 150. Whatever. It, they I love have that the game January... can barely handle what they've got in the game now, but they're always adding more to it. Yeah, I'm amazed you don't play that more, Troy. You are all about sandbox slash survival slash. It runs like ass. Does it really? On everything, yeah. It it's mm -hmm. never run well on any any build I've ever had ever. I know they Even fixed now. it. They, like it's better now, but seeing some, I saw someone play it on day one. And you can make characters. You could like, you know, have their waist this big and their shoulders this big. And there's some of the characters. You look, look up arc ugly characters, something from a Google image search, and they're just monsters. The characters themselves, not the actual. I used to love doing that. I can't in get Ion. over <laughs> I used to love creating just these awful monstrosities in Ion. Their character creator really let you create some stupid looking stuff. Arc is 400 gigs. 
Jesus. What? Well, what? No. No, it's not. Everybody now typing. <laughs> Everybody looking it up on Steam now. Oh, it's free to play. For, what is it? I don't know. Oh, it's a free. Oh, it's a free weekend. Okay, I was like, wait, what? So it does clock sixty in. gig. Sixty gig. Yeah. Okay. It does clock. Don't let the sixty gigabyte install size fool you. If you include all the extra content that Ark Survival Evolved has available, which is around ten DLCs, you'll need to make a lot more room than sixty gigs in total. A complete install of Ark Survival Evolved is estimated to take up approximately 275 gigabytes oh, wow. on your storage drive. Okay. Good grief. Mm. Good grief. You need to, most people would need to buy its, its own SSD. <laughs> it's I like, have multiple MMOs installed that don't take up that much space. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's get down to it, gentlemen. Gamigo, Fractured Online. Before we get to that, speaking itself, of MMOs that will not be taking up space on my hard drive, I imagine that this is one you were looking forward to at least a little bit, Troy. Oh, it seems like lot. it's very your cup of tea. It's very small. It's very niche. Let's kind of uh, let before we get into the whole Gamigo thing. We didn't really cover Fractured on MMO Bomb all that much because they are going buy to play, uh, and so. You know, until August, we didn't cover buy to play. There's a buy to play with an optional sub, um, and so we really just kind of picked up fractured coverage here and there since August. So, for people watching this show that maybe you know are really free to play, tell us a little bit about what fractured is, what the team is doing, what some of the goals are, what's the gameplay loop like. Give us a little mini fractured education, Troy. Uh, so obviously if i'm that excited about it i've been big into sandboxes here lately uh, especially looking for sandbox mmos and this was going to be a top-down unique perspective open world sandbox mmo uh with what was described as like a fully interactable environment go out and adventure as your hero there was going to be combat there was going to be crafting there was going to be the ability to start settlements and, and build them out in the world uh, farming, uh, just basically anything you wanted to do in a, in a somewhat high fantasy setting. And it looked a little, it looked a little grim dark to me, but I think overall it's probably going to be more, it was going to be more of a high fantasy setting or a low fantasy setting. Maybe, uh, there now, were to, wizards and stuff. So, and to be fair, they have been like uh, developing this for like four or five years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's had multiple alphas over the last couple of years as well through supporter packs and things like that. Dynamite Studios, the team behind it, very, very small. Like, you could tell it's a passion project type thing, right? It's like eight eight friends making their, their game. The only thing, and I'm not generally a sandbox guy, so this fracture really doesn't hit the mark for me personally. It's nothing against what they're creating here. It's just not probably, I'll check it out for my job, but it's probably not going to be my type of game. The only thing I did, like, ugh, come on, guys was like everything on their site was the first open world this, the first dynamic this, the yeah. first this. And I was like, okay, I can appreciate your skill system and you trying to say that like this is the first time this has ever been done, but this is really similar to Eve's skill system, Eve Online skill system. You know, so there's a lot of buzzwords there from a small team and I can't begrudge them that. There are some neat things. Jason, on something we've talked about in the past, this is a spatial, IO, uh, spatial OS title and that's a little intriguing simply because we know the promise again i feel like nfts again right mm, we know yeah. the promise of what spatial os technology can do as far as massive open worlds with tons of people but worlds adrift other titles using that platform just went away and then we have scavengers which did launch with spatial os but really doesn't have the player base to 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 show us the technology that spatial os promises so there's a lot of interesting things I think going on here. I don't know if it would have ended up being a game I would have been interested in, but Jason, you're a little more survival than I, but what, what do you think? The game I would have been interested in you think it's not like it's already shut down. Uh, <laughs> this, this feels to me like when, uh, when perfect world got gigantic. Motigo. Oh was... yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, Motiga was out of money. They needed, and they they said at first, mm -hmm. "Oh, this is a partnership." 
And we found out later, no, they just straight up bought Motiga. This feels like the same thing. I feel like Dynamite Studios, just as you said, the passion project has been going for four years. I, I looked them up. They have like 1,400 followers on Twitter, which is only 300 more than me. So that's like not... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like a yeah it's not a huge game but and we not didn't expect it to be but I just I'll tell you what though they, they don't have I will the tell resources. you what though I will tell you what though it is the fan base may not be big at least on like Twitter and stuff I actually think their Discord's a pretty decent size Troy are you in their Discord can you oh, like... I was until the day that um that really? I, the... <laughs> I I th- I thought their last time I was in their Discord it was pretty popping. Yeah, it was. Uh, they, that was what the conversation. I think that's like their primary thing is is the yeah. Discord, not so much Twitter and stuff like that. So yeah, a little more niche, but I don't think they were like <laughs> we we have zero players. Like they they have a yeah. community. Um, I thought it could have been a nice is little super had, dedicated. Had, I like yeah. so all this is in the, in the past. They had a community. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, it the, might have been something um, I was Discord interested. exploded when this announcement came out, like literally. Yeah. Oh, look at the forum. Look at the look at the announcement post. I looked at the announcement post and like on their forums and well, actually, it was the Q and A. Was they asked for Q and A? First off, about half the responses have been deleted, so who knows how awful they are. The other half are basically, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I took took out one person's comment to signify the questions they had. Question one: Why Gamigo? Many consider them the worst publisher possible. The only reason I can think of is that you ran out of money and this is a last resort. Two, what kind of cash shop and pay to win features will you add? Three, in your announcement, you mentioned this will bring in more players. Please explain this. A lot of people won't touch this game because of Gamigo. And that's basically the 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 tone yeah. that all the comments have. In so my opinion, you know, a lot of people asking for refunds. A lot of people so asking for refunds. Yeah. So, yeah, Gamigo has been hyping an MMORPG. Uh, the way they were making it sound, and they, they came into our chat and were trolling us about uh, speculation on it before. Very fun. And I should preface this discussion with, if I'm not very complimentary of Gamigo here on this situation, I am speaking, of course, about Gamigo the company as a whole. I do have individuals, not friends, but acquaintances that I work with at Gamigo that are perfectly pleasant and perfectly nice and everything. I make the distinction when we talk about criticizing a game that I'm criticizing the product, not the creators necessarily of that product. But that, that EA guy the thinks same, they're the same thing. They're all right, the same thing. Right. I'll make the same distinction here for Gamigo. They don't have the best rep. And I, in interviews, have kind of pinned them on different monetization choices over the last 10, 12 years and stuff like that. So there were, to, to Troy's point, a lot of people unhappy with this announcement. The overwhelming majority of the fractured fan base, I think, was unhappy enough that CEO of Dynamite Studios immediately posted like a nine minute video addressing some of those concerns and saying, you know, why Gamigo to some of the questions Jason just read. Well, we're a small team, eight or nine people. We could continue on like this, but... You know, we're making enough from the founders packs to be able to continue development and stuff with eight or nine people, but we don't have the income to expand beyond that. So we are stuck at how much we can do and at what pace. And Gamigo apparently was sniffing around the water in 2017. Uh, didn't say they said they weren't quite ready for a publishing deal. Gamigo didn't feel that they were ready for that, but they had been providing feedback and, and assistance along the way with the hope of maybe it turning into a publishing deal. He pointed out that some other publishers did ask or approach them uh, at different times and that they ended up going with Gamigo for a few reasons, that they felt they gave them the, the best support options going forward to expand their team, that they were one of the first, if not the first. He wasn't quite clear on that. He, he seemed to imply that they were the first company uh, interested in publishing, and that says a lot to them and their personal relationships with the people at Gamigo that they had worked with. Uh, On the monetization front, still going to be buy-to-play, optional sub. They said the cash shop, none of that is changing from any of our original design because if Gamigo wanted a theme park MMO, they would have gone and agreed to publish a theme park MMO. They wanted what we were delivering. We align here. There's not going to be any changes to any of this. The stuff we were putting in the cash shop is the stuff we wanted to put in the cash shop anyway. It'll never change. Right. Uh, And yeah, 
Uh, they retain ownership of the IP and creative control of the IP. Now, Gamigo does not have the best rep. In fact, the phrase I see often, Troy, is Gamigo is a place where games go or where MMOs go to die. And if you look at Try On World's titles, I, you know, maybe there's some truth to that. If you look back at like Grand Fiesta and, uh, and stuff like that, you know, Grand Fantasia, sorry. You kind of see that let's get profit very quickly and then get out of it and on to the next game. Is that where some of the negative perception is coming from? Or is it concerns on, you know, they're totally going to screw the monetization over? Like, what is the concern here with Gamigo? Uh, the concern is that the game's going to launch um, and it's going to take as much money as it can as buy to play. Uh, then it's going to switch over to a free-to-play model, and then the cash shop is going to become overly full of solutions to problems that the developers are now creating in the game, such as XP grind. Uh, there's going to be armor sold, uh, weapons sold, uh, in-game items but sold. But they're saying the none of shop. that's going to happen. But you're just saying the overarching Gamigo philosophy of milk it, make it free, maximize profits when the player base dwindles add more stuff to sell and then when it dies it dies and then stop, and, and we and make then a ton of money over yes. we make a ton of money over three years instead of making a really really lot of money by investing back into it uh, uh over the next 12 years which is track record says that's what they do I mean, they shut down a bunch of stuff from uh, Tryon. Although, <laughs> yeah. Jason, to be fair, I think a lot of those things were going to be shut down. Anyway. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, and that's uh, again, I don't know. But exactly then you look at other things, though. They cut the Rift team. You know, they they Trove is Trove is still trucking along. Uh, but Even, if you look at fans of Trove, the monetization and stuff hasn't changed. But the fans of Trove are starting to get a little upset in the the speed of content delivery. There's apparently some bit of content coming to Rift next year. We don't know what or to what degree, but we also haven't seen them expanding. We haven't seen them expanding the team there at all. It does have that stigma of things that Gamigo has done in the past of maximize short-term gain and then roll on to the next title. I mean, Rift Rift was kind of struggling, I think, in general when, you know, try and sold it. So I think I don't even look at that as being a really bad thing that it's been getting free, basically nothing for the past three years. But and yeah, I mean, I don't see how it's on the one level, I can sort of agree with the notion that it's not going to change much for, for Fractured, being that they were small before, they're still going to be small. So I don't think this is going to be some sort of explosive growth thing for them, even, even if you didn't have all the issues with Gamigo and whatever. Yeah, that's just the nature of the make. game yeah. they're making, I would think. So yeah, I, if if this does like shut down in like two years or whatever, because that's not going to be Gamigo's fault, I don't think. I think it's going to be the natural progression of the game, and based on as I said, you know, they couldn't grow that much. Yeah, now they've got some more money; they can hire more people. Is that really going to draw in more people, draw in more players? I don't know. So let me let me throw this at you, Troy. Uh, and chat pointing out Arc Age, right? Gamigo saying nothing's which also change was with Arc kind Age. of shit from the start, but you know nothing's going to change with Arc Age, and then they they um, changed quite a bit with Arc Age, um, and then in fact got rid of it uh, and sent sent it on over to Cacao. Um, that's who has it right now, right? I mean, that's the Arc yeah. Age has changed hands so many times, it's kind of hard to keep <laughs> yeah. up with. Cacao officially has it. Now. <laughs> let me let me throw this at you, Troy. All right, so you don't like Gamigo's short term because they are their parent company is a merger company. You know, it, they're not really, when you think about a game company, uh, their parents aren't game companies. They're a mergers company. So that mentality of pick up a game, get some money out of it, and then move on to the next game, that's kind of in line with their business model. I can't really fault them for the parent company being in that business, whether it's video games or otherwise. It becomes a little less scrupulous when you're talking about things of an addictive nature like MMORPGs tend to be or time invested in games. But let me throw this at you. This doesn't kind of fit that mold, does it? This isn't a game that's out, that is doing okay, that is doing decent money, that Gamigo thinks they can pump things up. This is not a released product. They are not buying and taking over a title that's been running for a while and maximizing some profits and moving it on. 
they're going to have to put money into this right off the bat to continue slash complete development at some time. They did say that uh, in the CEO video that Gamigo's uh, publishing and support gives them the ability to actually launch this game, not in 2025. And he said, hopefully in 2022. So there is going to be some investment here, right? This isn't the typical Gamigo play of grab games that are a little less popular than they used to be, milk them dry and send them out the door and go on to the next game. This is kind of getting in on the ground level, knowing you're going to have to spend a little money. Does that change perception for you as a, as a fan at all? I don't think it does. There's a bit of a different play going on here. I don't think it does. Uh, Yes. It's a bit of a different, uh, like you said, going in scenario, but I think at the end of the day, like you said, uh, Gamigo's not necessarily, I mean, it's a game company as in they own games, uh, but their investment ownership is just looking to flip investments and make money uh, just as often as possible. I think uh, at the at the end of the day, they their investors just see, oh, we had a sandbox MMO that was making X amount of dollars and we lost it. Uh, so we want to replace sandbox MMO. Any other sandbox MMO will do the same thing, according to these investors who don't actually know games. So let's just take another sandbox MMO and plug it in there and it'll do the same thing for us. Yeah, we got to put a few dollars into it, but we just need to plug that hole of our money coming in. And I don't think they realize that uh, it, it's not the same scenario. Jason, I don't think the team was was prepared for the reception that this announcement got. Uh, I kind of got the impression that, yeah, they thought there might be some people that made some cheap jabs about Gamigo and this and this, but I am not seeing, I'm seeing very little, if any, defending of the decision to take on a publisher and then also having it be Gamigo. Now, they were in their video saying, we've always really been looking for a publisher to get this where we want to get it at some point, uh, and we ended up going with Gamigo. I I don't know if they were prepared for how badly this might go for them with you looking at people requesting refunds and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also wonder, to some extent, it's always going to be that very loud minority who hate everything. Of course, yeah, of course. The Jason Winters of the world. Yeah, exactly, you know. Uh, I don't actually hate Gamigo for some reason, but, but in any case, uh, yeah, they they probably weren't, but they probably also know they have enough dedicated fans, and they they of course can look at their player numbers. And the question is always going to be that it's like, okay, if we've got if we had whatever ten thousand you know, regular people logging in every day, do we now have what ninety eight hundred? Oh gosh, it's just those two hundred people who are saying the bad things on our on our on our video that are leaving, or is it actually more than that? So. If, if the actual numbers don't go down that much, they're probably still okay with it. What I might be a little more concerned about, Troy, than like instant monetization changes or cash up changes they might make two or three or four years down the road now, what might concern me more if I was very, very invested in Fractured is that this might accelerate the timeline leading to inferior results at the end. Uh, as far as development goes, cutting oh, yeah, things from, from the board and, and stuff like that, because this get needs it out, let's to get come it out, out let's next get it out, year. Let's yeah. get it out. Let's get it out. Let's get it out. That's all. That's all Gamigo's going to care about. And then there's there's another part. Look, I don't know the guy who put out the Q&A video. I don't, I'm not calling him a liar. I'm not saying that what he was saying was untrue as far as he knows. But I have a very hard time believing, because I think they're literally just plugging the sandbox MMO hole with another sandbox MMO, I have a very hard time believing that they would plug that hole with another game that they don't own at least enough of that it can't just walk away from them. Uh, the the video, by the way, was that. Dynamite Studios CEO Jacopo Pietro Galelli. Just, I, so, I mean, I know you don't know him, but to be clear to the audience here, it yeah. was their actual CEO. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a liar, but I'm very skeptical about pretty much everything that was said in that Q and a, I really have a hard time. Like I said, believing they've, they've went out and invested in something that two or three years down the road, if the IP is still owned by dynamite studios, um, game, Gamigo has to have some sort of ownership stake in the studio or something. They're not just going to gonna fill that with something else. To Jason's point, uh, about, the uh, Motiga thing, yeah. yeah, about Motiga. Yeah. I think, I think more will come out over time, obviously. I don't know. Um, 
from an instant PR hit, this is not good for the game. Uh, how not good remains to be seen. Uh, Gamigo, like it or not, and I think they're just fine with it, has that reputation, and it's well-deserved. Uh, you know, Whether you're willing to put up with it or not is your own personal choice playing games. I honestly, again, I have acquaintances there, but I can't tell you the last time I played a Gamigo game because I don't like the churn and burn mentality the company has when it comes to producing games. Uh, and that's what they do, um, like it or not. I, I think Josh, your boy Josh Hayes Strife, made a a whole couple series of like worst MMOs ever that had different Gamigo titles on there as well. I know you're a <laughs> big fan of his, Troy. Um, yeah. And I think he actually did a video about them as a company too, if I remember right. So... Yeah, it's not one. If I was supported, if I really was interested in the title to begin with, I got to say, Jason, this probably would change my perception of, okay, you know yeah. what? There's a many other options out there. I think I'm going to skip this one now. And mm-hmm. that concerns me because what they have could be interesting for the smaller audience that is going to be interested in it. And staying small might have been the best play. Yeah, it's going to take you longer for the payoff. But staying small and not tying yourself to a company with a negative connotation when it comes to churn and burn MMOs might have been the better play for realizing your vision here. Yeah, I think in the short term they're going to like it because they're going to get all the fancy resources right. and whatever. Yeah, better but... computers, better people, you know, more people, yeah. stuff like yeah, yeah. But this would not be something that I look for as being a big. I would, I would say, I like I said, I'll give it maybe two years before we start to wonder about whether it's going to actually ever launch or whatever. <laughs> oh, I think it'll launch before that. I um, okay. I think it'll so. be. I think it'll be forced out the That's door true. before. That's that. true. It, it might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will it be something? Yeah, they're gonna want. shove it out. The yeah, one hundred percent. If they're not ready to launch, it's going to launch. Yeah. It's going to launch. Particularly if what you're saying, Troy, is is what was going on behind the scenes. We just got rid of one. We need another one. Which does have to make you think. Why'd you get rid of Arcage? If you wanted a sandbox MMO in your stable. Why Why would you take one on that you're going to have to initially invest in when you could just let Arcage go? Oh, I'll because tell you why. Cacao inv- sent them a paycheck. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's <why>. true. <laughs> well, that and probably even even with whatever additional investment they need, it probably still costs less to maintain and run oh, yeah, fraction yeah. than it does Arcage. Yeah. Yeah, Let's true. see. I could have 500000 now or I could have a million over the next three years. Uh, give me that 500 k check, please. Here's Arcage. Yeah. It's all yours. Those numbers are made up. Uh, let's slide over, gentlemen, and go to the Weekly Bombs. I mean, at the end of the day, it got them press. (laughs) It definitely got them press. Mad Martha (laughs) pointing out, and something the CEO mentioned was, you know, we really don't have a marketing or a PR department or anything like that. You know, we we haven't been able to do any of that. This gives us the capability to do that. Maybe they did it the wrong way. Um, I don't even remember how I came to know about that game. It had to have been on here. We had to have talked about something in it. Came I'm not gonna lie. I, I always had it confused with something else. I'm trying to remember what now. But I was, <laughs> there was some other game. I'm going to give an A bomb to Final Fantasy 14 having to suspend sales again. Over the next couple of days, you will not be able to, as they implement it, you will not be able to buy the starter set uh, or the complete edition of Final Fantasy 14, nor will you be able to create a new trial account if you don't already have one. You will still be able to upgrade and buy individual expansions. If you are a subscriber and you need to like buy Endwalker, but you have all the rest, you just can't come in as a brand new player and pick everything up because of the server issues. They continue. They continue in some respects. They've been a little bit worse for me personally. Uh, Others having similar things. They're giving out 14 more free days on top of the seven they already gave. So we're all we've all all of us subscribers have 21 days incoming to us. I, again, I'll give. I gave them credit when they did this in a Realm Reborn. I'm going to give them credit for doing it now. They are for. Uh, they are foregoing millions of dollars in subscription fees and things like that by doing this. If we just get like eight more days, basically everybody got a free month at that point. But to have to actually do that again feels really bad. Feels really bad all these years later. So a bomb to them having to do it, but. At the same time, kudos for pulling the trigger on it. 
customer service. You just don't see companies do this type of stuff. Yoshi P continues to be the man, and that is an amazing team behind that game. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, first, a bomb to Stojanowski for not knowing what year it was in chat. Starting by starting by saying a bomb to twenty twenty, and then going on no a bomb to twenty twenty one. Uh, uh, I give a bomb to Christmas shopping. It's, it's enough of a pain in the ass when there's not a pandemic going on. You guys should go out and do things, but even worse now. Just I haven't done anything. I still need to buy some things for people, but maybe I'll All do right. it. I don't know. Troy, I'm not saying everybody. <laughs> but enough that it has caught my attention and it's bugged me a little bit, uh, kind of <laughs> jumping on the uh, Magic Man bandwagon here. A bomb to everybody who is just giving Final Fantasy a pass for everything that they would rake any other game over the coals with. I understand they have they have trust built up with their community. I get that. But even the clickbait YouTubers <laughs> are like wearing kid gloves when they talk about Final Fantasy 14 and the and the wait times and the servers and blah blah blah. Any other game y'all would be eaten alive right now. Let's let's I, I don't understand. I understand it's the sanctuary for everybody who left WoW right now and I understand it's popular and I understand everybody loves Yoshi P. It doesn't matter what other game it is. It would be raked over the coals right now. Um, a bomb to just giving Final Fantasy a pass for everything. Yeah, we should all play good games like New World. <laughs> That's right. To call twenty three ninety nine to bomb to that final walk in the last zone of Endwalker. This is from chat, by the no way. No spoilers. They really know how to hit all the notes. Also, to bomb to Josh Lambo. You did all Floridians a <laughs> solid. <laughs> <laughs> Poor. A little football reference thing, how do you get fired there. on your day off that's what i want to know <laughs> how do you get fired on your day also off? never kick the kicker yeah that's the one uh, guy you don't want to get in a battle of legs with stojan saying a bomb to 2021 in general uh to call telling me that my bomb is actually a dub bomb hey man i broke it down i said a bomb for having to do it but good on them for doing it i just don't think eight years later we should still be in a situation where we have to do that uh, Ninja Panda says, Da bomb to PSO2 New Genesis update, which is bloody amazing, and I'm quite far in the story already. Yeah, two days ago, you got Redem and uh, level cap increase and skills, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. Uh, chat, you can keep them coming as we work through the YouTube and ones on MMOBomb.com. Guestly says, even though I watch, uh, Da bomb to me, I guess. Uh, even though I watched, listened to a lot of GTA 5 RP streams, Asmund Gold, and a few others, yet I am a super fan to MMO Bomb. There's Gessley getting his That's Twitch fun. report for the year. Oh, okay. There we go. Is an MMO Bomb super fan, and you can yeah. be too. Come on over, twitch.tv slash MMO Bomb. Make sure you follow. If you like what we do here and you want to see more of it, follow us on Twitch. You can catch us live. Go to the site, go to YouTube, share, notify, subscribe, all that fun stuff. All that fun stuff. Much appreciated. Go ahead, Jason. Nasagra says, considering that I played Guild Wars 2 casually for 3,500 hours over eight years, have 21 max level characters, my account is in the top 15% of all players in terms of account value on GW2 efficiency, which only counts players that have registered an API key with the site. Jason is absolutely right that Guild Wars 2 is a better fit for me than Final Fantasy XIV. No doubt. I'm just in market for something else until End of Dragons is released. There you I, go, Nassau, bro. I, I, I like, oh, I just, you know, I just busted out a casual 3,500 hours. <laughs> you know, but if you're not doing the raiding or even the strike missions like me, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, but you, you, Nassau, you do, you did, you did make it raise an excellent point in your article when you said Jason is absolutely right. <laughs> go ahead, go. Troy. Get the next one. Uh, C Swig, thanks for putting the cast on Spotify. I use it all the time. It is. You can get this show on Spotify and iTunes, actually, and you can put us in your ear on the go. On the go. Uh, Box says, right? Weekly Bomb. <laughs> I'm overdue for Bomb since I've been forgetful about leaving comments because I usually end up listening to the show on Spotify and forgetting to come over to drop a comment or a like. Don't forget. Yeah, I mean, if you listen on iTunes and Spotify, follow us there and everything. But, you know, if it doesn't have YouTube views, I ain't doing the show anymore. And I'll tell you what, take a free-to-play out of the title, hurt the hell out of this show. I hurt the hell out of the viewership on this show. So help a, help a friend out here. 
Uh, first bomb I'm giving is a dub bomb to Final Fantasy XIV, specifically for the time I've been able to put into Endwalker, mostly with Reaper, has been an absolute blast. Taking the time with finishing it up now so I can get every story or enjoy every story detail. Can't wait. Second bomb will be another to bomb because I learned Fortnite players on Twitter apparently don't know about anything else besides existing besides that. Reading all the bad takes was a nice laugh. Not to rain on their parade, even though 14 totally deserved to win for both awards. Yeah, Fortnite players were a bit miffed at uh, Square Enix picking those awards up at the Game Awards. Yeah, a bit there. Terra Nova, debombed a dauntless PS5 update. The game plays much better at 60 FPS and much faster load times. Plus, they did a nice job with the controller's features. Now I just need to remember how to play the game. It's been some time. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, always good when you go back to a game, particularly MMOs. MMOs are the worst to go back to after a oh long time. Lord, we've got like 20 minutes of people talking about NFTs now. The show, show's going to go for a while, people. Buckle <laughs> up. <sighs> Last week's question, which I knew was going to be a big uh, answer here. Uh, NFTs in games, for them, against them. What are your thoughts? Guestly says, what do I think? It's stupid. Never liked the idea because in my opinion, there are more drawbacks than benefits. What happened to games for fun, social experience, escaping reality in another world to forget problems in the real world? Developers and publishers' priority will be the money, not the content or the state of the game. People who want to make money won't care what the state of the game is as long as they make money. People who want to simply play and have fun will suffer because of it. In my eyes, it's the new loot box, battle pass, mobile gaming fad. Developers jump in there because that's the easier way to make money than making an actual good game because there are little percentage of the player base who are ready to invest big amounts of money in there. And let me correct myself that those are not part of the player base. Those are different, a different kind of people. You could say investors. But the most negative thing about it, for someone to make money else, some, uh, someone else has to lose it. In my opinion, just keep them separated. I'm not saying it eventually won't bring something positive to gaming, but how I see it, it'll be more negative than positive. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Uh, first of all, Mad Martha in chat. The bomb for Warframe's release and launch of New War. How many other big games can can release expansions as a hot patch without even taking the servers down? Yeah, I will mention that Guild Wars Two has always been good about that. Yeah, even Guild, Guild Wars, Wars One as well. They always talk about how they have their almost permanent uptime. I so. will say this too, though, for working for the website, Warframe sucks sometimes on that front. Because we'll get a press release that just says X is going to launch this week. And that's it. And the next press release we'll get is X has launched. <laughs> we we have no dates on anything. Like we did not, we never got a date for the new war. We got their press just saying this is the week. Could happen on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Could happen Friday. And you just kind of got to be ready for it. That sucks. But well, it is nice for players. Go ahead, Jason. I mean, what do you expect from an indie company? <laughs> oh, don't start. Speaking of their press releases, Nasagra says NFTs and blockchain are just another new technology being overhyped by idiots, including C suite idiots who don't understand what it's actually good for and just want to make a quick buck. We are in the hype phase before the bubble burst, and after that burst is when the use is when the cases with real value will emerge. In gaming, I think NFTs and blockchains have far more value as internal systems than as something a player sees. For example, let's say every item in an MMO was an NFT. Where and how it first created was recorded as part of the NFT's info, and all trades of those items are recorded in a blockchain. If something stupid happened, like QA test for leaving a spawn of a very valuable raid drop randomly on the ground in a build of the game, causing hundreds of the items to flood the market instead of having to do a full rollback, the devs could just look at the blockchain to track the items that came from that spawn and undo the transactions related to the bug. If you're wondering why it's such a stupidly scientific example, it's because that bug actually happened in old school RuneScape, causing one of the few rollbacks in the game's history. Reversing stuff like that example, stopping item dupes by making items untradeable if multiple items claim to have the same NFT ID, and tracking and reversing real-world trading are the kinds of case use cases I think will become common in the industry because it makes the lives of the devs and support and the staff a little bit easier. All right. You've actually convinced me that there might be an actual useful use for this sort of thing, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's, all about, it's all about the dollars and dollars. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, Breckner Catalan question of the week. I'm okay with NFTs like what Ubisoft showed us. However, I'd expect that to be the only paid for content in games. If cosmetic NFTs, yeah, right. <laughs> right. If cosmetic NFTs were to take the place of loot boxes slash shops, I'd be happy. 
in a dream world. <laughs> Frosty saying, question of the week. In principle, I'm fine with an NFT. Not selling JPEGs, but other more reasonable uses. But I've yet to see an actual good use for it in gaming. Everything that was mentioned in Ubisoft Quartz could have been implemented using typical solutions, and the end result would have been the same. Decentralization aspect gives zero benefits when the game itself is centralized and everything depends on it anyway. It was implemented with blockchain just to cash in on current trends. And we have warned you on this show that there are a lot of companies that aren't really investing in this, but they're throwing a few dimes at it just to say they are because of that trend type mentality. So you really got to oh watch. Goodness, have yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, going back to Nassauger's point, it's like, yeah, all the all the press releases and all the hype are going to be, you can buy an NFT and make lots of money. There's not going to be a single press release about how we did this to make it easier for our programmers. Like that, right. That's not what they're interested in at all. Uh, Raisy 101s, the NFTs are a great concept, not realized uh, potential or promise in any domain thus far. As they are now the majority amount to novelty and scams, I do however think there is a place for them in gaming. We already more or less have the concept as part of trading digital goods with no direct or overt real world value, such as with gotcha and gambling, CSGO, etc. So it's not really a far stretch away. Is this the best application for it? Probably not. I could totally envision in the future NFTs attached to achievements such as world first or all time records, or even truly unique item crafting. I think as people adjust their preconceived notions about NFTs and they will integrate into different real world applications, the rest will follow. What most exciting me, however, is when NFTs and market appreciation for skills and grading is matched with NFTs, for example, open source credentialing, they're going to see an explosion in talent via modding, etc. You could. Overall, more you generally could. reasonably positive, even handed responses than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I cut one or two just in the interest of time here, but you, all of you nailed it. I mean, you just you hit it out of the park on this one. Whether you liked them or didn't, it was amazing some of your responses. So, I expect the same on this week's question, considering that you have three weeks to get your weekly bombs and your questions and in there. I better see dozens of YouTube comments. Feed that algorithm. Don't forget your bombs. If you're on iTunes or Spotify, take a minute. Head on over to MMO Bomb. Head on over to the YouTube page. Get your comments in there. We got three weeks. I want a ton of comments because the news over the next few weeks is probably going to be a little slower. So you have to fill up some time on next show. This week's question of the week, is the Fractured slash Gamigo partnership a good one in your eyes? Good for the company, Dynamite? Good for the game, Fractured? Good for you, the players? Let us know. And if you weren't interested or you were just kind of watching Fractured, you weren't invested, you didn't have a founder's pack or anything yet, does this make you more or less likely to try out Fractured. And what about those of you that did have uh, access to the game or were part of the Discord? Does this make you more or less likely to stay or leave? Break it down in the comments below. Don't forget your weekly bombs. It's been a wonderful 2021 hanging out with you. So many years here at MMOBomb.com. We love you and thank you for it. Hope you have a wonderful, safe holiday and a happy new year. For those of you that can hang out on the streams uh, over the next couple of weeks, we will still see you. But if this is the only thing you watch uh, uh, as far as seeing us live, then by all means, have a happy holidays and safe new year. Until we reconvene, Troy, where can everybody find you? Hey, I'll be here next Wednesday for a little while to run a stream, twitch.tv slash MMO bomb. What about you, Jason? Uh, Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. I am Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at MMO Bomb so we can tweet at you every time we go live with one of our streams through the holidays. If you can make it, great. If not, enjoy the time with your family. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. <laughs>